everybody. <laughs> Welcome. It's time for a minute to skim it. A weekly review show that we have been doing for, as Bean reminds me, seven years. I haven't seven been years. here for seven years. She's been here for seven years. Yep. <laughs> Every week. Uh, only only missing uh, occasionally, but uh, the staff takes over. So we've been doing this to make sure that you know what to go grab at your local comic shop on Wednesdays for a great long time. So if you are trying to figure out where to go get books this week, make sure you use comicshoplocator.com so you can use your zip code for wherever you are right now and see what all the choices are in your neck of the woods. Go and say hi to them, even if you don't necessarily think there's anything out this week that appeals to you. You never know. Maybe they've got other cool things in their shop that you can pick up and support them. You know, there's not like a million comic shops in the world. There's only, I think we're down to 1,500 of us stalwart peoples. So support us. Don't don't ever think to a far future where you're like going, ah, oh, I can't find a comic shop. I should have stopped in in the last 20 years. <laughs> don't get there. That's a bad spot. All right. We got some cool stuff. I'm going to start here. This is the death of Dr. Strange. And um, you know how sometimes there's books out there where you're like, well, it'll get to it eventually in the fifth issue or something. They'll get around to the actual doing of the thing. In this case, um, it, they get right down to it. So um, it's interesting because uh, Jed McKay and, and crew, um, this is you know, happening now, now in the Marvel universe. So he interacts with his, the strange Academy uh, students. Um, you see him do his everyday tasks. You see that, you know, you may not know that um, Dr. Strange got back his ability to be able to use his hands so he can be a surgeon. So he's been an actual doctor for a little while. Uh, you may not know that um, he has a dog that is a ghost dog that hangs out with him. That is an actual character that's been, uh, I think Donnie Cates created him and I can't remember the actual issue, but uh, he's been around for a while in storyline. So all of those characters exist in this world and this has real implications. Um, it's neat because uh, I love it when the main character has got um, a big long ex exposition that they're doing throughout the entire book, but it's in blocks that you know is just kind of like their thought process. Mm -hmm. And you know it's important, but it doesn't really get you everything, but teases you just enough to you know something else is going on. So if you, if you read this book and didn't read those blocks at all, it would be a very straightforward story about his demise and what's going to happen next and what, what happens when the supreme person that is keeping all magics and other dimensions of magics at bay for the earth. What happens if they go away? Some important stuff going on here. So um, yeah, do read it with the blocks. It makes more sense. So enjoy death of Dr. Strange. I wouldn't miss it. Honestly, if you, even if all you know is the stuff from the movies, you're okay. Mm -hmm. You'll still enjoy the book. Yeah. I, I read that one today too, because oh, it, uh, I mean, I was excited to read it. And like I said, I'm not, I, I don't follow a lot of Dr. Strange, but it was, it was really good to have like, kind of like a intro to him where he is. He has a really good mustache. Is that normal for him to have um, that solid of a mustache? Like with the curl a little bit and. So always have good facial yeah, hair game. But mm -hmm. I, I think it might, they might be upping it. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't, he does pass away. No spoilers because it's on, you know, the yeah. name, but you know, <laughs> you don't have to do a spoiler alert for something that's the yeah. name of a book. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So I got to read this week Aquaman the Becoming with Aqua Lad on the cover. And this one was really good. And it's interesting because it's kind of like uh, Aqua Lad being trained to take over the Aquaman role, which is really mm -hmm. interesting. And the first part of the comic is primarily about that, about him going through his training, his relationship with Aquaman and Mira, and just kind of like how he's balancing that with his regular everyday life. And then things go very poorly 
uh, at the end. And it, it actually, it's really interesting because, you know, most comics have like the name of the story at the beginning. This one has it on the very last cover because, um, yeah, the, the whole time you're like, oh, this is so nice. This is what a nice life he's living. And then, bam, it, it doesn't go so well for him. Yeah. Uh, JD puts up uh, Aqualad working those Instagram angles. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he's, my goodness. He's, like, he, he's a hottie patati. Yeah, I, I love this cover so much. So, it, And to answer your question, JD... Uh, those are there's a different question being asked of you where there's like show of hands who believes Doctor Strange is gonna die exactly no one uh, well he does I just told you so in my spoilery spoiler mm -hmm. but I think what you really mean to ask is is he gonna stay dead is he dead dead or is he Marvel yeah. dead <laughs> <laughs> or, is or is he valiant dead if he's valiant dead he dead that's it <laughs> all right because as I said before, not yet, don't play. Mm -hmm. It's for realsies. All right. Uh, this one has the world's longest title. I'll go. There are many long titles this week. Some of them I didn't type yeah. them all the way in because I'm like, I'm going to get a hand cramp and I'm going to need to put in for disability. Because <laughs> this is literally called Star Wars Adventures Ghost of Vader's Castle Dawn of the Droids, which. If you want to shorten it, it is S W A G O V C D O T D. <laughs> okay, so uh, traditionally the Star Wars Adventure line is uh, made for kids. Although the first part of this book's kind of spooky because it focuses in on the Sith, so it gets a little bit dark it for is, a second. <laughs> it is spooky season. Mm. That's true. Um, and it's two different telling of a tales. Like one, one tale is talking about kind of like what's going on now. And then it has like a jump back the I star Wars book with droids. I like it. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, so the storyline that happens in the middle jumps back to, oh, I fixed it. I liked it better the other way. Um, the, uh, Padme and of course her Jedi protector, Anakin, uh, the two droids and Jar Jar go back to a planet that they have stopped getting messages from. They've stopped hearing from the people there. And they encounter some spooky stuff. I'm only going to give you the hint of showing you the cover-up clothes. Everything is not as it seems. They can't find any people, but they can find droids there. And if you can, if you think about it really hard, people that have been around since the 70s, Dawn of the Droids should make you think of something. And yes, that's what it means. So um, this is actually really great. I would say even as a, a adult person, you should pick up this book because it's a, a really good start to what I'm sure is going to be a terrifying tale. Perfect for the season and reading for your kids and freaking them all the way out. <laughs> all right. My next one is going to be The Citizen, which was put out by Action Lab. This is its number one. Now, this one, I mean, and honestly, I just grabbed it. Number one, okay, I'll just grab it. I'll just read it. This one, it's it's a good one. It's pretty funny, too. Uh, this book is about a city where everyone is a superhero except for one guy. The citizen. The singular citizen. What? He's the only person that's normal? Yes! <laughs> it's so good. And, like... He, it's hilarious because they're like, but for some reason they all still have secret identities. <laughs> and like, it starts off, there's like a bank robbery and everyone else in his office is like, oh, I've got to go feed my dog and all like <laughs> runs out and he's the only one left. It's so funny. It's, uh, this one is really good. And I was worried because this first episode actually kind of wraps up nicely. It, it almost kind of felt like a one shot, but I think it's just introducing you to that whole world. But this is definitely going to be a series. Number two is coming out already confirmed. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm probably going to add this to my pull boxes. It, it was oh, really, really It funny. just got real. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I have a question for you. What's up? If everybody, there's only one citizen, uh, can we assume that everyone is either, and the reason why they have to have secret identities, mm -hmm. everyone's either a villain or a hero. Do yes. we know? Okay. I, I, that's the, that's the idea is that mm -hmm. every single person is either a villain or a hero in this entire world. 
and they're like fighting over who's going to get to save the one guy who's <laughs> normal. It's brilliant. Yeah, it it's great. So and is he is he a kind of like a smart guy? Is he kind of figured out that this is that that's his oh, role in he life? He knows. He well, no, he knows everyone is a superhero, and he's just really done with it. He's just like. <laughs> And and like people be like, oh hey buddy, and he's like, oh hey super plant man, and they're like, what? I've never heard of that man in his, in my life, and it's like, no, like I dude, I know <laughs> who you are, like, but yeah, oh, it's great. It. Okay, all right, this one Frontiers Man number one, it's kind of like a weird combination between a environmental preachy book. And uh, like um, shirtless bear fighter, because the character Frontiers Man is actually a really cool character. Like he used to be, he's always been Frontiers Man as a superhero, and he's gotten old enough to re kind of like retire away and has got himself hidden away in the woods. And the whole book is basically about, you know, he's thinks no one knows where he is, but this you know, young man shows up, college age guy, and wants to talk to him about, does he want to use his, uh, his good name to further a cause, which that's the part that feels preachy a little bit, but it's not any more preachy than uh, shirtless bear fighter in which it really was about saving the woods, right? That was the whole point of it. So, uh, and the, the character is cool enough and old cootery enough uh, to to make you be like, I forgive you for, you know, making me feel like your whole book's about saving the trees. But hey, you should also save trees. But it is ironic to think that they've got a book about saving trees that is printed on trees. Just gonna leave that there. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up is one Suicide Squad King Shark coming out after we got sort of a uh which i didn't i didn't actually get to read the comp free comic book day of king shark that came out really so good. but uh yeah so in this one this is the the number one one of six that's coming out about him and it, it's really interesting because it starts off he's in prison king shark's in prison and but it actually doesn't start off focusing on him it, it starts off with uh another with a minor uh, villain in the DC world named Defacer, who's in there because she's done a couple of different things, and you know, literally her her whole super villain thing is vandalism. So I was gonna say, yeah, is she a yeah. tagger? Yes, that's that's <laughs> it. And so all the other villains in the prison are making fun of her because they're like, "What? You got locked up for spray painting? Like?" What are you doing here with all the real villains? They're kind of bullying her. Um, but King Shark takes a liking to her. So it's it's kind of got like a romance subplot going Ooh. on. Um, but basically he gets summoned back by his dad, who's a shark, of course, you know. Um, and he gets kind of given a mission by his father. And Defacer is coming along with him for various reasons. Um, it's really interesting, and I, I am going to share a quote from the book, if you think that's okay. I think that would okay. be awesome. Um, it does include the description in it of um, if Mortal Kombat involved furries is one of the quotes from the book. If to Mortal just, Kombat <laughs> involved... Okay! Yes, uh, okay. and uh, so it's going to be really interesting. That was that was it, the official description of what's going to happen next mm -hmm. in this series. So if you like monster fights, this is going to be a good one. It's going to okay. be a good one. Uh, a heads up for people. Mm -hmm. I know that there are quite a few first appearances of characters in this book and many other books that released this week. The list of, book, of books that have first appearances in them is at least 10 this week. So... You should just buy everything just in case, because who knows? And everyone has to join in to uh, Kyle's nonsense here. So I think we have to do it this way. King of Shark. Oh, no. A King of Shark. There you go. Thank you for that hum curse. Appreciate it. All right. He who fights with monsters. This is from the artist of Something is Killing the Children. So you can recognize 
that cool art. This is a new book out of Ablaze Studios. Um, this one deals, insofar as we can tell right now, um, about the monsters, in this case, feel like the Nazis. So this one is wartime tale. Um, it presents itself as being pretty straightforward in that way, but I know that they're going to do the twist at some point that pulls you into more of the story than just that it's like, you know, bad guy versus good guy back in, back in the war. Um, it, uh, this, this main character here is presented himself as a doctor who is out, you know, past curfew, whatever gets stopped. And, um, the soldiers go to look in his bag and he's like, no, you can't look at my bag. You can't touch that equipment. I'm a doctor and you're going to, uh, I think he says, instead of saying it's, it's all sterilized because maybe they understand sterilization. And he was like, I, I just came from someone's house and it's got, you know, it hasn't been cleaned yet. You don't want to touch that stuff. Mm -hmm. But then you find out that he has other stuff hidden in the bag. So, um, it's a, it's a good grounded beginning of a tale. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, fits in with our scheme of really long titles for comic books, which mm -hmm. I think is a trend that's going on and I'm not mad at it. So yeah. All right. So next up we have the, uh, let's see, I guess I, I should say everything on here is fear state, Batman secret files, miracle Molly. We'll see with the long, the long time. Although I think this one just goes by miracle Molly. If you're, if you're looking it up at things, um, so this one is really good. Also, this is the cover A art. Like they, oh, they wow. went hard on cover A. I mean, I, I looked at I looked it up and I was like, is this is this a variant? No, this is the cover. That's it. And uh this was awesome. I wasn't really familiar with Miracle Molly, which is not surprising since evidently she was just introduced in January yeah, and brilliant. already has her own comic here. I feel like She's going to be somebody you're going to start seeing cosplays of because she's very cool. She looks yeah, really cool. Really cute. And this book is awesome. I did look up and confirm this is a this is a one shot. So one and done. And it's definitely worth picking up, especially Miracle Molly is new now. But if she becomes like a cosplay favorite, you know, a convention favorite, having this one nine months after she was introduced is going to be mm -hmm. important. But basically, this is her origin story from the very beginnings. It's really interesting because she's a, it it's, shows her from just regular person who's very disgruntled in her like day to day life. She is a robotics engineer, but she works at this kind of crappy company and she stepped on and they don't want her to do anything creative. They just want her to like do her job and go home where she works on her own projects oh. but it, it's really interesting it introduces the um the unsanity movement as they're called and it's a a transhumanist lifestyle which that if you're not familiar with that that's basically the idea that in order for humans to evolve we need to become part machine so that's what she's makes sense trying so to do and then uh, shells are falling apart yeah <laughs> But anyway, this is really good. It's a really, really interesting story. And it just is like that whole, what what are you supposed to get out of your life? You know, mm -hmm. she's kind of stuck in a dead end job, you know, and then she, I mean, you're not supposed to become a super villain. That's not the answer, but no. to, that's what happens to her. So I like, I like the, the, the string of this thought together is Miracle Molly, the female version of Miracle Man, like Mary... Mary Marvel is to Shazam. No. No. At least I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so either. But it's funny. It's a funny thought. All right. Last Ronin. Last Ronin. Um, let's see. So you get to see in this issue. Um, making sure I'm not messing this up. Uh, Mikey's picking up of um, a student. I can't remember if he picked her up already in the last issue or not. Somebody that's related to a character you know. So that's an important thing that happens in this books. Yeah, you should definitely, that the legit feels. 
and we finally get to see the actual what happened to um we don't know what happened to a couple of the turtles we find out what happened to donnie in this one and we get to get to find out what happens to master splinter and so this goes no no lie you cried yeah it was, oh, it's man. an emotional issue it's like what the heck it is doing it all right now to us so i mean i'm sure i don't have to make a hard pitch sell for last ronin uh the experience in our local shops here is that no one has any copies of any number of any print <laughs> there are none so uh this one's definitely one you're not going to want to miss um it is definitely one i would call up your shop tonight let them know that you're interested in it because i don't think there's gonna be any left once the doors open uh tomorrow so heart heart wrenching and i don't think this is the end i think we have one more if it, if i'm wrong then i apologize but i swear there's one more in this in the series and then it's done <laughs> Do you think they're going to, are they going to publish a trade paperback of that probably once it gets all done? I would hope so. It okay. would make a nice coffee table book because it feels like, um, like Batman, um, Dark Knight would have, where it's like going to be something that isn't part of maybe the main storyline for the characters, but is something that tells an important enough tale that people are going to want to have it around. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say, yes, I would, I would put myself down for a good hardcover of this one and just put it in the bookshelf or put it on your, mm -hmm. put it on the coffee table. So people can be like, what's this about? And you're like, here, let me give you your first hit for mm -hmm. free. It's comic book time. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. What else do I have? So I, I read King Spawn number two, which my, my first time on the show about a month ago, I read King Spawn number one. Mm -hmm. And I was in way over my head. What? Still probably am with Spawn. <laughs> but, you know, um, I I have learned some. And this week when Spawn, King Spawn number two came out, I was like, I want to read this. I want to read this. I Because I, it's just so good. And, like, mm -hmm. and in this one, it's sort of revealed somewhat who the big bad is going to be. Maybe uh, we have... Uh, I don't think it's a big spoiler because it's immediately revealed in this book, but uh, Billy Kincaid is back to be the bad and the, the puppet master sort of behind a lot of what's been going on. Mm -hmm. And it is really good. It's setting it up. It, you're seeing Spawn sort of in this mindset where the, he is frustrated and trying to get things together Things don't really work out how he planned. He wasn't really able to plan, but it's really good. And it's setting up for the rest of the series. And it's just awesome. This is a really good one to, to get. I think we're really, we're close to when we we're going to get to the gunslinger spawn book, it's which a lot of people are very interested. Mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> that's another one of those books that you might consider putting on your polls now. Cause I have a feeling that as we get closer and the more likelihood is that all the print run sells out before release, that uh, the demand's going to outstrip the supply is my guess. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. though that one also was, uh, I think that um, just like King spawn, I think the gunslinger spawn uh, comes with and scorch will too mm -hmm. come with that. The incentive of the one and two fifty cover signed by Todd. So a lot of people will stretch to that. So there should be some around, but um I think that you, I think that you might just, just in case. So what issue, sorry, watching the Phillies at the same time. It's number two. Number two for King's yeah. Bond. And that was number four for Last Ronin, if that was where you were in the feed when you mm -hmm. asked. Okay. Um, if you haven't figured it out by now, the United States of Captain America is going to have a first appearance of a character in every single book. It's very clear they're going to introduce you to a new person that cap meets that is trying to do a good thing in their community by serving as their own captain america for their communities and this one um is a really cool female character that shows up and um has a really awesome costume by the way <laughs> he can add it. yeah 
and that's oh, um, awesome yeah oh my goodness and so far it appears that it's a good thing that they're not you know getting in the way or setting themselves up to get like you know too many people it's going to be bad i think mm -hmm. honestly i think what you're going to end up with is a team of captain america characters which i don't know how they're going to get around the fact they're all called captains so. <laughs> but um it's like here's a here's a good look at her that's actually her costume looks much different than they actually present in the comic so in this case the comic cover image is a lie mm -hmm. it has a really cool um like a design cover which actually has a better look at her um, so if you like first appearances you can go get the rest of this one's number four so you need one two and three to catch the rest of them and i think i just have one oh left. should i go again yeah uh, let me go saint mercy all right so when I read St. Mercy, the first one, I really loved the concept so much that I could not wait to get to number two. This is a dark horse book. Um, and it bounced back and forth between two stories. One happens in the wild west. This is Mercy. And she, uh, I, think, I don't know if she's like an attendant or what at the, the church in their, their small, you know, Western town. It's having difficulties. And this kind of the reverse upside down image happens in 500 BC, I believe. And it, that girl is getting slated to be um, sacrificed. She's a willing sacrifice uh, to their Mayan God. So the two stories tie together in so much right now that we know only in the gold like crown that uh, the girl that's going to be sacrificed is wearing. Uh, makes it forward in time to mercy. They had it buried under the church and now it's been stolen. So um, the great, great storytelling. I can guarantee you there's nothing like it out there because I don't know how else anyone else would come up with such things. Yeah, I love that cover with the reflection. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And the other, the other number one was like that too, where it had the same mm -hmm. kind of like reverse images yeah do you think if the cover wasn't like this does it set up and set it up in the comic book too that these these two are totally related like does it cut between them as you're reading as well or mm -hmm. is it sort of the cover that pulls it together the the storytelling lets you know that it's connected somehow not that they know each other because it's you know yeah. oceans of time but i'm sure they're going to tie it together so we know 100 percent how they're put together but it's clear that that's what the storytelling is going for mm -hmm. All right, so this one, it's a number, it's issue three of Moon Knight. I read Ooh. this this week because uh, our coworker here at the shop, Shanice, told me all about Moon Knight, which I had kind of heard a little bit. I'd seen some of the memes, you know, but I never really picked it up. And she sold me on Moon Knight so completely that this week I was like, it might be number three. I'm jumping in. And it was so good. This one is so interesting because it starts off with him in his psychiatrist's office where he's talking about how that he's been up against this enemy who's out to get him. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I think it might be me. Oh. Which is something that Shanisa talked about how that he has DID, dissociative personality disorder, you know. And so it was so interesting. But actually in as the, the comment goes on, it actually is an outside force, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's so interesting because he's taken in sort of this gaggle of vampires <laughs> that are like his henchmen now. And, you know, he's supposed to be hunting them, but then he decided just to keep some of them around mm -hmm. and they're his buddies now. Yeah. And it's, it's so wild and it's so good. And like, even me, I've never read Moon Knight before in my life. And I jumped in here and was it was a great time and I wasn't lost. I wasn't confused. I was just cool. That's He's, good writing though. Right. If you can just yeah. jump in the middle of the series. Yeah, no, it was, it was really great. So that was just, I don't know, just an update of the week mm -hmm. of moon Knight's Awesome. That's killer art on the front. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's McNiven art. No wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. What am I doing? Oh, I've got two left. Mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Two. Uh, the Onslaught Revelation is a book 
Okay, so Onslaught's one of my favorite characters of all time because, spoiler alert, back in the 90s when I had my first store from 95 to 97, the Onslaught story played out. And if you have never read it before, it kind of like has Onslaught show up as a character, but you don't know where he came from. And you only know that he's powerful enough to be able to break into Professor X's mind and mess with Jean Grey, which seems impossible. Um, and really puts everyone through the ringer and we would have big long discussions like you do at a comic book shop who in the world could onslaught be and early on as i do i like to make the most ridiculous guesses ever that you know it's the opposite of occam's razor in my, my point and i said i'm pretty sure that onslaught is prop x because he's the only person i know that can break into his own brain and sure enough that's what went down Oh. So just so that you know, that's the back history of that character because it'll help you help inform your decision making about what's going on here. They don't actually address that all in this book, but it does tie in directly to what's been going on in Hickman's run. It's direct storytelling to the story that's going on right now. It pulls in the aspects of Nightcrawler's book, Way of the X, Way of X, and actually mentions Way of X5. So if you can read that one before this one, it would be awesome for knowing what's going on. And uh, it does appear that somebody is in inside of other mutants' minds on Krakoa and on their sister planet on Mars, the, the um, can't remember the other plant, the other uh, island's name. It starts with an A. Anyway, you know which one I'm talking about. Um, so, um, I'm trying to think of how much I can get you into this without spoiling the things. That's pretty much what you need to know. Um, the idea that at any time, uh, if someone dies on Krakoa or anywhere in the mutant dumb that they can just merely be uploaded from the latest download that uh, Professor X has been telling Cerebro to do, which is now the helmet that he wears on his head. Um, that all seems like a very good safety net, unless you know what I just told you and you think about it really hard is true. So there you go. I'm just going to mess with your mind a little bit and leave it there. I love psychological messing with you, mm -hmm. storytelling, and you get down to the nitties, my best. All right, and for fans of Baby Teeth, this is Donnie Cates' long-running series with Aftershock. This is going to bl blow your ever-loving mind, because for the whole series so far, as far as I know, they have presented the main character as the Antichrist, which he is, okay? You have a sweet, innocent name. Look at we're going to boy name. But uh, from the very beginning, I think on the day of his birth, he creates, you know, giant earthquakes. You find out he doesn't drink milk. He drinks blood. There's all these like really bad things that happen. His, you know, him, his actions result in the death of family members. So it's like he's been bad from the very beginning or things around him have been bad from the very beginning. So when you read this finishing of the tale, which goes way forward in time in his life, it's going to destroy you. And it's awesome. Is this like the the end of it? This is it. Last issue. Oh. Done. Done, done. Unless oh he wants to go back goodness. and, you know, do a second series or something. But it says yeah. the final issue. And I believe oh. Donnie, because he likes to do things finally. Mm -hmm. as he's kind of like that kind of writer. All right, awesome. and I just want to mention, because I can get plenty of time to do it, we've got a bunch of really cool trade paperbacks this week, including, um, I just accidentally wore this shirt today. There's no lie about that <laughs> at all. I put it on today, and I was like, I haven't worn my Gideon Falls shirt in a while, and it just happens to be hardcover release day for Gideon Falls, which is awesome. This is a book series that is in development right now. Um, it follows two different main storylines. One is about a uh, uh, priest who has been assigned to the town of Gideon Falls after the previous priest. He doesn't know it when he gets there, but he finds out pretty soon afterwards has disappeared. And there's a murder mystery that's going on in the town when he shows up and everything's really dark and weird. And the other storyline that's going on is about 
a gentleman who is under the care of a psychiatrist mm -hmm. um, and is trying out uh, maybe being out of a facility and not obsessing with a specific thing. Now, his thing is that he obsessively picks up what appear to be random objects and put them in jars. The objects are things like nails and bits of wood and bits of glass. And uh, he kind of like starts drawing in his uh, psychiatrist into the narrative that he believes is real. Mm -hmm. He's gathering all these things because they belong as part of the Black Barn, which is this place right here, mm -hmm. which in the series you find out is true. Mm -hmm. So it's about his seeming insanity, her getting drawn into that story, maybe that's insanity, mm -hmm. and the priest on his end trying to unravel the disappearance of his predecessor. Such dark psychological horror. So um, not for like reading right before bed. Yeah. I haven't I haven't read that one. I want to now. Is mm -hmm. it is it kind of like Twin Peaks esque? Without the humor, it sounds like maybe. Or is there yeah. some humor in it? Or uh, no, not really. No, it's okay. most it's mostly dark. It's not like dark bloody. It's just psychological horror. Yeah. It makes you feel un, uneven and uncomfortable, mm -hmm. kind of like, um, I'm trying to think what Lamar's other book was. It's got uh, The Unknown, where mm -hmm. it happens in an insane asylum, and then the, the nurse that shows up on the very first day, when she shows up, the lobby doesn't have anybody in it, and there is at the, like, the check-in desk, there's, like, a razor blade laying there, and I think maybe a syringe, and it starts out with insanity. You don't mm. know how much, how sane she is when she starts going to work. Yeah. And there's a, a crazy character that's in the insane asylum that she meets that wears a paper plate as a mask. It's got a face on it. And his name is Xerxes and he is unnerving, super unnerving. So that kind of that feel, which is like, I'm uncomfortable that I can't stop reading this thing. <laughs> That'd be a cheap cosplay. Yep. And I feel like it's uh, related a little bit to, I don't know if anyone reads Stephen King or watched the show Haven. Stephen King mm -hmm. read, wrote a short story that became Haven. Mm -hmm. And in that one, there is a black barn. So mm -hmm. feels like maybe they're, they're related. Mm -hmm. Also for trade paperbacks that are coming out this week, uh, the compiled story of I Breathe a Body. This one is by Zach Thompson and Andy McDonald out of Aftershock. And it's a science fiction horror series about social media, big tech, and influencer culture. Oh, I don't think I get that from the cover. Nope. I would is, not have guessed that. It's messed up. Okay, so I'll, I will I will give you the pitch on the back. Because I didn't get to read past the first issue, so I don't know how it all turns out. But this one, when the world's biggest influencer posts something irredeemably, irredeemably horrific online, the world changes in an instant. Now, it's up to his social media manager to fan the flames of outrage and create a sensational campaign that rewrites the rules of banned content. Thus begins a carnival of lust, revulsion, desire, and disgust. All for viral videos. So there you go. And the next issue in the cool series called Swing, this is volume four. It's by uh, Yushan Lee and Matt Hawkins. Yes, full of ooh la la. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. And then volume one of Yarnu, Child of Wonder by Unique Studios. She's a teenage orphan with no recollection of her past, only discovers she has abilities that rival the ancient deities spoken of in folklore of her people. So just remember that Unique Studios, oh, sorry, I'm not holding it very well. Unique Studios was uh, it's out of uh, an African culture written by African peoples. So it's a. Uh, not like just regular people from America mm. pretending at it. It's super awesome. I've known the guy who has a studio for a long time. He'd come every year to Comics Pro and show his stuff. And, you know, he's been working on it for a long time, getting into the mainstream, which is awesome. Uh, Daredevil Volume 6 is out this week, uh, which deals with the after effects of Daredevil going to prison and Electra stepping into his role as the Daredevil. That's awesome. Yeah. Then 
Scouts Honor by David Papoos at Aftershock. This one is post-apocalyptic goodness. And there's a new society that's risen from the ashes and their Bible's an old ranger scout manual. Isn't that a great pitch? That's awesome. <laughs> what is the statue on the front of it? Um, let's see. Uh, probably the founder of the scouts because it says oh a scout goodness. must always be repaired. A scout's duty is to protect others. A scout is forged in brotherhood, must obey his uh, probably scout master. A scout always probably extends mercy. A scout shall not be a burden. A scout's honor must never be in question. I know. All That's scouts awesome. out there, do yeah. those sound familiar? And this is a new thing that I just, I had to have. This one is called Rassel Castle by Wonderbound, which is the new um, uh, all ages imprint of Vault, I believe. And let's see, this one says... Uh, that Lydia Riverthane has always dreamed of being a professional wrestler, the greatest of all fighters in the kingdom of Grimsdale, growing up in the shadow of Rassel Castle, where her older brother routinely racks up championship belts, has only fueled her competitive fire. But when her brother's mysteriously arrested for treason, Lydia and her friends must find a way into the year-end tournament. There she can win back his freedom, the only way she knows how, wrestling. Sounds like a fun book to get for, you know, people in your family that might like to wrestle. Mm -hmm. We used to say to my kids all the time when they would try to get me on the floor to wrestle, I was like, no, no, I'm sorry. Dads are for wrestling and moms are for cuddling. You like the wrestling books? Kyle, Kyle needs a wrestling book. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that soon. All right. And also... Um, Finally, you guys get a completed, compiled edition of Joe Hill's awesome stuff and the imprint from DC. This is the Lolo Woods releasing this week. Oh my goodness. You can pick it up and put it in your collection with Basket of Heads. And I can't remember what the other one was. Uh, new release, uh, Wonder Woman Agent of Peace. This is uh, Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti. This is a, a bunch of different adventures across the whole DC universe. And hiding behind last run and over here. Ah, oh. this is not, I don't believe this is new, but this might be the first time it's in uh, just regular old floppy, floppy, uh, soft cover. Mr. Miracle, if you um, haven't gotten enough of Tom King, which you should not, and uh, this one you have to have. And Kyle was just asking if, if that's related to, to Miracle Molly. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think so, mm -hmm. but. This book's about love. It's about love between him and Big Barda. And that's all that matters. And oh. other uncomfortable things. Who's yeah. Big Barda? Yeah, that's, uh, where's Big Barda? Barda, where are you? She's awesome. Uh, every once in a while, I haven't seen her in a long time, but um, the voice actress for Big Barda would come in. There she is. It's Barda. Oh my goodness. I love her. Yeah. There's Ashi. Barda. I loved her before I even saw her. Anyone, any superhero named Big Barda, mm -hmm. I'm there for him. She's just being herself. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. And also, Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Blood. There's been lots of different series of this one. I'm trying to remember which series this one is. What the Snifter heck is going on in the back of that? Uh, Well, uh, Edgar Allan Poe is riding on a motorcycle, clearly. So these are, um, so it has a cask full of tales, including a take on how the 1% would fare in Mask of Red Death. Oh my God. Uh, it's a Sherlock Holmes investigation of murders from two Poe po stories. A update on Telltale Heart and more. So if you, oh, and new monster serial story also. So if you like, Someone taking Poe's stuff and retelling the tale in a new creative way. That is Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Blood. That's awesome. Also, we've got Deep Beyond in Trey. This is Mirka Andolfo's story uh, out of Image. And in case you didn't know what this one is about, it's an underpopulated future Earth devastated by the dire consequences of the Millennium Bug. 
survival of mankind and maybe of the planet itself is handled by a small number of people talented scientists who despite the adverse situation and the stupid feuds that continue to divide the small number of people still alive try to understand and study what is hidden in the depths of the abyss something mysterious and dangerous that could eventually cause an even worse and more destructive catastrophe so you're like underwater stories deep beyond I've been waiting on the trade of this, this one because I, I found it in about issue four and then was oh, yeah. like, I, I'm going to get that trade. Look at this panel work. Look at Oh, my goodness. It's beautiful. It's so cool. All right, and I know a lot of people have been waiting for this one. This is an awesome book out of uh, AWA Upshot by Garth Ennis. Go figure. We like it. Uh, this one's Marjorie Finnegan to Poor Old Criminal. It's really about her and uh, her sister who's trying to track her down. So she really is a criminal. She jumps through time and space and steals stuff. And her sister who looks like, you know, a one-eyed cow girl is trying to hunt her down. By the way, this disembodied head has to go with Marjorie everywhere she goes because that's how she travels through time. And it's kind of as much fun as having a talking gun if you have a head that you have to carry around with you that sasses you all the time. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. oh golly. And believe it or not, there is some actual manga that's going to arrive at your local comic shops. They've ordered it. This is, uh, they finally put out an omnibus for volumes one and two of The Wolf Boy is Mine. Discover, uh, <laughs> discover why Fruits Basket fans fell in love with a shape-shifting wolf boy and the girl who discovered his secret. So there you go. And... The new issue of Heaven's Design Team, that's number six, it says the arrival of the plant department throws the animal designers for a loop when the client makes a joint request of the two teams. Can this hodgepodge of eccentric personalities pull such a challenging collaboration? And with more ludicrous projects on the horizon, one designer may just be pushed over the edge. Yes, it really truly is these people in heaven naming the animals. Now it sounds like they have to name some kind of hybrid plant animal something maybe oh i like the animals on the front including the teddy bear drinking a beer i don't know that's pretty funny though uh and then batman little gotham calendar days these are cool digest size books that are perfect for everyone as it says mm -hmm. on the back and this one says deck the halls and stuff as the turkey <laughs> oh sorry and tough stuff the turkey as gotham's tiniest and mightiest celebrate halloween thanksgiving lunar new year Cinco de Mayo, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and everything in between. And these holiday-themed, all-age stories. Uh, Dustin Wynn and Derek Fridolfs. And featuring little Batman, little Robin, all your favorite little bat guys. <laughs> it's adorable. That's awesome. And this one has been a huge seller for us. If you've never, never picked up this series, you should just think about this one's The Way of the House Husband. Um... So this one's a little bit confused, a little bit uh, crazy because, you know, he has gone home to be a house husband, but he was a former member of the Yakuza. Mm. So there you go. He has a cute dog on the back. Mm -hmm. So I'll read this. This is funny. All of Tatsu's hustling and networking since leaving the Yakuza has earned him an offer he can't refuse, an invitation to run with the Women's Association, the movers and shakers of his neighborhood. Those girls are scary, by the way. <laughs> Um, but before he can be initiated, the immortal dragon must prove to the board's heavyweights that he can truly hack it as a homemaker. Oh it will be the greatest test of his house husband's skills yet. <laughs> Not coolest. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nick's on the house. Hey, that's right. If you if you have an easy way to give us some, some thumbs up and some hearts, we super appreciate mm -hmm. it. Uh, evil thing. This looks like definitely related to Cruella. Mm -hmm. I think is a Disney Hyperion book. You may think you know the tale. Happy young couple, 101 Dalmatians. The woman determined to turn them into a perfectly spotted fur coat. But who is that monster? That scene stealer? That evil thing? Who's the woman behind it all? Before the car crash, before the dog napping, before first became her one true love, there was another story. This is the story of Cruella Deville. In her own words. There you go. Evil thing. Also a reminder to subscribe. Mm -hmm. If you want to make sure to never miss one of these awesome review shows or any of other things. 
Uh, this one is something you just should buy based on the name alone. You don't need to know anything else. Ah, oh, here you go. It's an easy way to subscribe to YouTube. It's just a QR code. Or if you're watching on YouTube right now, you just hit that subscribe button. That's easy. <laughs> How about Pirate Penguin versus Ninja Kitchen? Ninja Kitchen. Yeah, that's it. Ninja Chicken. It's a tongue twister. And it says Macaroni and Bees. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Get it? Macaroni and Bees? That's good. And last but not least, this awesome tale by Elliot Rahal, knock them dead. Sometimes you kill, sometimes you get killed, but no matter what, everyone dies the first time they go on stage. It's about a comedian, a wannabe comedian named Pryor Bryce. He's taken the plunge and started doing stand-up co comedy. Unfortunately, his older sister Ronan wants her brother to stop daydreaming and focus on his future. He's determined to succeed. The only problem is he sucks at stand-up. That is until an accident changes everything. Um, leading Pryor and Ronan to discover comedy isn't all it's cracked up to be. Uh, spoiler alert, gets into a car accident and the soul of the dude he runs into is what's really funny and telling the jokes, not him. Oh my goodness. Not him. So why didn't no one tell you about Ninja Chicken? I just did, but it was Ninja Kitchen. It's different, I lied. All right, everybody. Uh, also, a heads up. So you don't miss out on it. It is previews week. Previews week. It's got Cowboy Bebop on one side. Oh, and this gorgeous Vampirilla Unholy Dracula. Oh, my goodness. Mm. That looks way cool. All right. So, oh, and it's by Chris Priest. So it's going to be amazing, of course. So it's a good time to pick those up. Take them home and circle them up just like you used to do the Sears catalog or the Montgomery Ward catalog. Everyone's saying, what's a catalog? But you youngins should learn your history. No. <laughs> it was really a true joy. You got the crayons yeah. out. I want this, Mom. I had the the scholastics, <laughs> you know, the little scholastic book fair ones. <laughs> that was mine. I would sit at home, I would circle all these things. I, I knew I was only getting one little paperback, but I still, you could circle all the hardcovers you wanted in mm -hmm. those books. Like, oh, yeah. You know? So. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being with us. Uh, thanks to Kyle behind the scenes for helping us get all the cool things on the screen. And to our, I don't know, can we call you new? <laughs> thanks for Bean for jumping in and being part of our awesome reading crew. Yeah. And we'll get see you guys next week for some more Minute to Skim It. Thank you guys so much. Bye.